the Yankees just unleashed nine home runs and 20 runs on the Brewers. But there might be a secret behind their explosive success. They're not just swinging harder, they're rethinking the baseball bat itself. Using data, the team started to design custom bats tailored to their players' strengths. The new model features a thicker barrel that extends closer to the label, while the tip remains noticeably thin. Just take a look at these photos. This bat definitely doesn't follow the traditional mold. So why are they doing this? Who was the mastermind behind this bat? Could this spark a new trend across the league? And most importantly, is it even legal? After a disappointing offseason where the Yankees lost Juan Soto, they could use anything to spark their offense. During spring training, the Yankees' analytics department began evaluating their team and looking for flaws they could improve in their game. The mastermind behind the bat design was Aaron Lenhart, a physicist from MIT who worked as an analyst for the Yankees for two years. While working with the players, he learned they wanted to make more contact with pitches and they wanted to strike the ball on the sweet spot, which is the densest part of the bat, generally located six to seven inches down from the tip of the bat. Lenhart, in an interview with The Athletic, said, why don't we exchange how much wood we're putting on the tip versus how much we're putting in the sweet spot? Just try to take all that excess weight and put it where you're trying to hit the ball. And then in exchange, try to take the thinner diameter that used to be the sweet spot and put it on the tip. Lenhart worked with MLB officials who oversaw bat regulation and was able to get prototypes that followed regulations. Unfortunately, no Yankees picked up on the new bat model, and Lenhart actually left the staff and joined the Marlins in the 2025 season. In the offseason, the Yankees decided to reconsider the bat. They conducted one study with Anthony Volpe, where they concluded that most of his batted balls were close to the label on a traditional baseball bat. This is normally thinner than the barrel, and when contact is made toward the label, it's just a jam shot, and the contact result was never good. So the Yankees turned to the Lenhart designed bat that had added size toward the label and sacrificed size on the end. Volpe began practicing and saw improvements in his game. The Yankees realized that Volpe wasn't the only player with this problem, so in spring training, they had other players test out the bat in games. They identified five players who could use this bat. Anthony Volpe, Cody Bellinger, Austin Wells, Jazz Chisholm, and Paul Goldschmidt. What they all had in common was that their worst contact results were on inside pitches. As the data shows, inside pitches resulted in the lowest amount of hard hits and barrels for each of them. Typically when they got inside pitches, they couldn't get their hands around quick enough and they hit the ball with the weakest part of a traditional bat, near the label, or they just narrowly missed the ball on these pitches. In spring training, Cody Bellinger and Jazz Chisholm tried out the new bat, and to their surprise, the new bat had them swinging better than ever. And there might even be more data that supports the bat structure than just creating a larger sweet spot area toward the label. Bellinger told the New York Daily News, there's a growing focus among MLB hitters on weight distribution in their bats. You see these golfers, they're very into their clubs. As baseball players, it's like, why are we just picking up a bat and saying, oh, this feels good? Why is there no science behind anything here? You can test your swing path and test your exit velocity. There's data behind everything now. Bellinger brings up a great point that everything can be tested these days, so why not try as many bat combinations as possible until you get one that gives you the optimal results in bat speed, exit velocity, and more. Of the five Yankees using the bat in the regular season, early data shows that all of these players except Goldschmidt have vastly improved their average bat speed. Volpe went from 69.3 miles per hour to 72. Bellinger went from 69 to 71.3. Wells went from 72.4 to 74.6. And Jazz went from 71.9 to 73.4. These improvements make you think that the new bat's weight distribution is a large factor in the Yankees' improved bat speed. But there's even more. The thinner tip of the bat could help generate more foul balls when contact is made. Some players like Cody Bellinger and Jazz Chisholm, in particular, are known for chasing pitches on the outer part of the zone, and making weak contact off the end of the bat. Like, take this play for example. Bellinger gets a low and outside pitch and barely makes contact with the ball and skims it off the end of the bat. This resulted in an awful contact result, where it's just a dribbler to the pitcher under 60 miles per hour. Although, with the newly designed bat, 
that has an even smaller tip, there's a much higher chance that this ball is now fouled off since the bat doesn't have a large enough surface to generate force to put him into play, or he misses it altogether, which depending on the situation might actually be better than weak infield contact. Of the five Yankees using the new bat, they all homered in the Yankees' 20-run performance, and it looks like through a very small sample size, they are loving it. I love my bat. I don't know the science of it. I just play baseball, you know what I'm saying? Finding the perfect bat is definitely a balancing act. A published study from the University of Massachusetts Lowell that tested the effect of bat diameter on exit velocity found that exit velocity increases up to a point around 2.625 inches and then starts to decline as the barrel gets too large. So if the bat diameter is too small, it won't have a large enough sweet spot, and if it's too large, it might be harder to swing and reduce efficiency. The reason players used to cork bats is because it allowed them to keep a larger diameter for the sweet spot, but reduce on weight. Former Yankees player Kevin Smith, who worked with Aaron Lenhart, said, you definitely sacrifice some exit velocity if you go for a bigger barrel with the same weight, but the advantage in the contact clip rates outweighs exit velocity in a full season. Having higher exit velocity to start is a plus. Adding weight to the bat can offset. All five of the players who elected to use the bat had pretty good baseline exit velocities, and they were mainly looking to improve their contact and barrel rates, so it makes sense why there would be a fit to use this new bat. Then, in a published study from Kobe University, they tested 10 collegiate baseball players with different bats. Each bat varied in size, weight, and shape, but they all met the requirements for a legal collegiate bat. In the study, they concluded the swing of each batter is unique. Therefore, each batter reacted differently to the changes in bat characteristics, such as the mass and the position of the barrel. Some batters had significant decreases in the change of bats and others remain the same. All of these studies make me believe that this new Yankees bat is not for everyone. Aaron Judge led baseball in barrels per plate appearance and was fourth in average bat speed last year while almost winning a triple crown. Changing the bat he's using would be silly and could have negative effects on him. While not for everyone, there are players across baseball who might really benefit from this bat. They all fit the criteria by having below average bat speeds, above average baseline exit velocity, and struggle to generate barrels specifically on inside pitches. The players I identified, whose data really stood out to me as matches for this criteria, were Bo Bichette, Harrison Bader, and Nolan Jones. If Baseball Savant adds more data about where the ball made contact with the bat, it could help better identify even more players that are good fits. This innovative bat design raises an intriguing question. Will other teams follow suit and begin their own research into customized equipment? The Yankees may be paving the way for the next big trend in baseball, but only time will tell if this approach becomes the new norm or fades as a brief experiment. While Major League Baseball enforces a strict limit on bat diameter at 2.61 inches, it doesn't regulate where the maximum thickness must be placed. This leaves room for creative interpretation. As long as the bat stays within those boundaries, its design remains completely legal, opening the door for further innovation in the game. Let's hope Rob Manfred doesn't patch this in the next update.